New Skoda Kodiak Coupe is still on the cards for Europe. Skoda CEO Bernhard Mayer reconfirms desire to bring Coupe SUV to Europe, but the brand needs more production capacity first. Skoda's indecision on whether or not it will bring a new Kodiak-based Coupe SUV to Europe continues, as boss Bernhard Mayer confirms difficult decisions need to be made before it can launch anywhere other than China. When asked if European sales are still on the cards for the Coupe SUV, Mayer claimed it is a very complex question. He reconfirmed that the markets are asking for it but that the Czech Republic factory is already running two 4 HRS a day and six days a week. Previously, Skoda CEO Bernhard Mayer confirmed it would be sold in China, but held off on announcing plans to bring the car to Europe. When asked if it was possible that the Coupe SUV could be built in China and imported to Europe, Mayer said that is not a simple solution. The big issues then are logistics, shipping costs, and tariff-slash-duty costs. The Coupe SUV, in effect a slightly larger rival for the Range Rover Evoque and cars like the BMW X4 and Mercedes GLC Coupe, was teased to journalists back in 2015. For the Chinese market, it will be produced in one of Skoda's four plants in the country alongside a cheaper large 4x4. However, the Czech company has also been wrestling with the cultural implications of selling in Europe a vehicle focused on style instead of the brand's usual values, space and practicality. Speaking at a press conference in Prague, Mayer told us, the Coupe SUV is a wonderful derivative. We are going to make the brand even more emotional. Skoda's board member with responsibility for research and development, Christian Strub, has previously acknowledged that the management want to sell the Coupe SUV to European customers. We would like to have this car in Europe, yes, he said. The real problem is that we do not have the capacity to build everything that we would like to build. He added, there would be a really big potential for that car. It's not a question of potential. I think there is a business case. It's a question of capacity in our factories. We're now selling so many cars that we're discussing where we would be able to build this car. The opportunity for Skoda here in Europe would be really high, because it's so emotional, so attractive, that it would be the next step for us as a brand. Skoda has a tradition of being functional, but more and more it's emotion and innovation. This car is pure emotion. It is unlikely that Skoda would have the capacity required to make European versions of the car at its Chinese factories, the company already has local production lines for the Fabia, Octavia, Yeti, Rapid, Rapid Spaceback and Superb in the region, so even slotting in the Chinese Kodiak, its coupe sister vehicle and that cheaper 4x4 is likely to require significant investment. Skoda Coupe SUV, all we know so far. The as yet unnamed competitor for the BMW X4 and forthcoming Mercedes GLC Coupe will get a swept back profile and sloping roofline, plus tall suspension and a raised driving position. Expect big alloy wheels and a superb style front end, as well as sharp creases in the bodywork and a high boot lip for that coupe look. Inside, the new car will feel largely familiar to owners of current Skodas and other VW Group models, although we expect advances in technology to make it sharper and even more solidly built than any of the brand's existing cars. A central touch screen is likely to come as standard, along with various market-leading safety technologies and infotainment options. Power will come from a range of existing VW Group petrol and diesel engines, while buyers will be offered a selection of manual and DSG automatic gearboxes. A green line version is also set to be an option, promising CO2 emissions of less than 110 G/km and 60 mpg fuel economy. Plug-in hybrids could also join the range at a later date. We will be growing our SUV range in the future, a Skoda spokesperson said. All of our new models will offer class-leading space, value, and quality. 
So long as these can be included, the sky is the limit. As a result, this new model is likely to better the BMW X4 for boot space, with more head and legroom and improved internal storage. The X4 features a 500 liter boot, 50 liters down on the boxier X3, with a maximum of 1,400 liters if you fold the rear seats flat. As with the BMW, the Skoda will remain a strict 5-seater, despite being based on the upcoming 7-seat flagship SUV. As is the case with Skoda's popular Yeti, the Coupe Com SUV will be offered with a choice of front and four-wheel drive. The raised ride height will help with ground clearance, while underbody cladding will give it a degree of off-road ability. Like the BMW, though, this new model will be primarily designed for the road with weighty steering and adjustable driving modes. The new coupe SUV will form part of a four-strong crossover range due to be revealed in the coming months. After the introduction of Skoda's all-new 7-seater in 2016, the brand will launch the new Yeti 12 months later. The revised model will build on the current car's success, albeit with a more conventional SUV body, rather than the existing model's van-like shape. Later that year, the Yeti will spawn a smaller, super mini-sized SUV designed to rival the likes of the Nissan Juke and innovative Citroën C4 Cactus. Skoda boss Bernhard Mayer told us that another specific model for China has been decided already, which will then be on the market in 2018. This will be a crossover vehicle with a strong SUV connection. It's hoped the four new cars will combine with the existing model range to help Skoda increase sales to a whopping 1.5 million globally by 2020 which would be up nearly 50 per center on its 2014 figure. With a new Fabia and Superb already on sale and a facelift Octavia penned for 2017, there will soon be a Skoda for, almost, every taste. Our sources did say, though, that a Skoda convertible is totally out of the question.